No, that, that was very obvious that they were mamash the korban, they were the sacrifice for the entire generation. Many tzaddikim and mekubalim they said that there was such a gzera on Am Yisrael, and you see it even in, in Bafoal, you see that, that now when they find all the tunnels that, and everything that they prepared, it literally would be a disaster if their plan would... would, would uh, Yeah, because if, if they wouldn't chas v'shalom, you know, kidnapped and killed these, these boys, then they wouldn't start a war against the Hamas. They wouldn't find it. They had a plan on Rosh Hashanah to go hundreds of, of, of terrorists out of all these tunnels and just to... Kill. You, can you imagine the level of, of, of damage it would do? Bechlal, originally they said that the Hamas in Shimam had a plan to do it simultaneously with the Hezbollah from both sides. And then Hashem got the Hezbollah uh, uh, busy in Syria because Syria, you know, they're being uh, 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 funded by Syria. The Hezbollah is being funded by Syria. So Hezbollah goes and fights in Syria with Assad. So they're busy right now. The Hashem got them busy. So for Baruch Hashem. So maybe three boys had to... Hmm? Can you imagine the disaster? Now the thing is that they say, nobody really knows, but they say that even though supposedly Syria gave up their chemical weapons. They say they didn't really give it up. They gave half of it to Hezbollah. Can you imagine if chemical weapons will fall into Hamas and Hezbollah? So a thousand missiles will fire onto Israel. The Iron Dome is not going to help according with chemical weapons. So obviously you can look at it from the right way and say, okay, for whatever reason, it was a gzera on Am Israel, And Hashem said, okay, I'm going to take these three three uh, uh, sacrifices, these three li li young boys, and they'll be the korban for the entire nation and save the entire nation. And that's probably what happened. And these three boys are what's called the Malchut. They, they're like right next to Hashem. They don't even feel anything in their pain. They leave their body like, I, I always say that they leave their body like a ballistic missile straight to Hashem. They don't go through anything that we know of Chibut Kever, Kaf Akel, all, there's, there's nothing. No trial, no nothing. The Neshama goes straight to Hashem. It's a very good question because sometimes the, 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 the neshama needs the last pain to get the last kapara and then leaves the body. Some cases, the, 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 the body doesn't feel anything. The, 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 the soul leaves the body before the death. Yeah, but it also doesn't it depend where it got shot? Like if, it's death. If, the, if the end result is death, if it depends on the neshama. Sometimes the neshama literally leaves the body before the actual act, act actually happened. And then the neshama, the body doesn't feel anything. The neshama just wakes up and sees the death. But the body doesn't feel anything. Sometimes the person needs to get the, the, to go through the pain and to go through the suffering to be the last kapara. That's why you see a lot of people, if, if a very old man gets sick before he dies, this is like the last kapara at the end, the body suffers. You see a lot of people that right before they die, they get like Shem Erachem de Machala. Because the body needs to go through some Yisurim to have the last end of the Miruk, and then the Neshama goes out of the body, Baruch Hashem. That's why you see an old person suffering, you should pray for him not to suffer, but it's kind of good for the Neshama, because he's, the, the, the goof is getting the last Yisurim, and the Neshama just lives quietly. So in this case, sometimes the goof feels the Yisurim, and it needs it. Sometimes the Neshama just pulls out of the body before it even happened. And all of those chayalim, they're also Kiddush Hashem? Betach. Any chayal that goes and gives his life to, to, to protect the Am Israel, this is Kiddush Hashem. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're on the level of the Yeah. Yeah. Even though they weren't religious like that. Even though. You know, Mesirut Nefesh, Kiddush Hashem is... What is the triangle? Yeah. We'll get to the triangle, but the thing is that, yeah, and, uh, so, uh, the, even if somebody was a Rasha, Chas V'Shalom, in his life, and the second before he died, he did Mesirut Nefesh, Kiddush Hashem, that's it. A person in Berega Konet Olamo. All the people from the Shoah are all Arugay Malchut.
That's why when you look at it in a more, I can't say understanding way, because everybody says why the Shoah happened. If you look at it in, the, in a more open mind, you say, okay, these Neshamot, they're actually, they're lucky. They came down to the world for whatever reason, and they got such a chesed to die on Kiddush Hashem. They didn't even know that they were dying on Kiddush Hashem. So we don't know the Cheshbonot of Shemaim. Sometimes you see something that happens, you can say, that person is lucky, he died on Kiddush Hashem. So, of course, all the, all the people in the Shoah, Arugay Malchut, all the people who died in terror attacks, soldiers, a person can be, the thing is that, a person, I'll give you a scenario and then I'll let you go. A person can be living his life perfect. He goes up to Shemaim, they tell him, you were like a tzaddik. Everything is good. But one time you did Chilu Shabbat. So you have a din of mitah. You have to get punished by death. But you already died. So what are we going to do with you? So they tell him, okay, we're going to bring you back down to this world. Yeah, you don't have to do anything in this world, technically. Whatever you do is a bonus. Just to be born and die, or to even live your life. And then you die, and you yotzi in this din of mitah. And you know, you, you were such a tzaddik, we're going to let you die on Kiddush Hashem even. So you see this 18-year-old boy goes into the army, and, and he dies on Kiddush Hashem. He doesn't even know, but uh, there's such rachamim on him from, from Shamaim that anything that he did in the, his life, has no meaning. But uh, you say that he did everything perfect, but he did one thing. That's I'm talking in a Gilgul Kodem, in a different yeah. reincarnation. Yeah, but sometimes the thing is that a person can be 99.9 .9 perfect and has one little avera and he didn't do tshuva on it. He, they, they don't want him to miss the entire Gan Eden that he deserves because he has one little blemish. Okay. You have to understand the concept of the blemishes. Is, let's say right now I have a, a tank of water and I have like a microscopic hole in it. And any water you're going to pour in it, because there's a little hole, the water will be leaking. That's this little avera. So, but my question is, didn't the times he did the good things make up for the tshuva? Sometimes no, maybe not. Maybe he, that's why I said before, when you said about Tikkun HaKlali on this, you don't know how perfect your tshuva is, you don't want to leave one corner open. So it could be that you were 100% perfect, one thing you didn't do tshuva on, you hurt a person, you did something, you, you didn't polish it. And when he comes back, and like, let's say age of 18, like, you know, God takes him, like, until then, like, when he does chatein, does it also affect? Because, you know... It, it depends on the situation. Like, you know, let's say, the... the thing is that technically one is not accountable till the age of 20. So you see these chayalim, these soldiers, you know, till the age of 13, nobody's accountable for anything. Any kid that dies before 13, there's no, there's no sins. Now, technically, at 13... You're accountable between Adam and Chavero, between you and your fellow friend. From 20, you're accountable for anything, everything, when you're 20. So when you see a 19-year-old soldier get died, technically, he doesn't have sins, really. Maybe he could have achieved much more with mitzvot in this world, but dying in Kiddush Hashem overpowers any mitzvah that he could have done in, the, in, the, in his last eight years. And any Avera that he maybe did is nothing. You know what it is to die on Kiddush Hashem? You know what it is to take a rifle and go into fight? To be, you know, to, to protect other people? you jumping into fire? You see now the videos they put on YouTube, the, how the soldiers... I just saw today a, a, a video from above. You see the officer jumping on the, on the terrorist. You saw it? He picks up the body. Yeah, he picks the body and the terrorist body explodes. You, you see things. Yeah, no. You see it from above. So the soldier ran into him, and the second he threw, he picked the soldier and like used them as a shield. Yeah. So the soldier, the grenade got exploded. The soldier, the terrorist died, and the officer he got wounded a little bit, very little from from the uh, impact, and that's it. But he saved all his chayalim. You know, these are things that. He ran to him. You see it from above. There's like a, a, a drone. That he took a grenade huh? and he just, when he saw it, he just ran. He just ran. You see him running to him and gra grabbing him. Imagine the, the scene that you see a, a, a terrorist in front of you coming with a grenade. You run to him 
and you you pick him up. Can you imagine? Because you know that the grenade will kill everybody around you. So, no. He was a terrorist of the body of the terrorist. You never know. You saw this. Uh, I don't get too much into the, to this because it's a waste of time. I'd rather st study Torah than watch all the videos. But I, I, I saw like a title that one of the soldiers got saved. He had like a prayer book yeah. with him. You never know how things work. You know, my father, Baruch Hashem, was in all the wars in Israel. And I was born right after the Yom Kippur War. And my father was, uh, I don't know how you call it in English, he was a machat, mefaked chativa, like a, 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 a colonel. And he was, his tank was the first. And at one point he got out of the tank and he got out and he looked in the binoculars. He put the binocular down and an Egyptian sniper shot him. And the second he put the binocular down, the bullet went into the binoculars. And, and he has the binocular with it. And literally, if he wouldn't put it down, he has the binocular. And the thing is that, you know, my mother kept saying, you know, Hashem saved him, so he came back from the war and you were born. So you don't know how Hashem, how Hashem turns things around. Who, who's supposed to live, who's supposed to die? But you see that, you know, from above, each person has an expiration date. And if it's time to be to go, it's time to go. And the the when a person has this chut on dying on kiddush Hashem, that's every time you know it's the most saddest thing to see the terror attacks and all this. But when you look at the people, you're saying, "Wow, you know they got a, a first class ticket." Yeah. Even we even, even if they didn't have the kavanah, they just sat on the bus and the bus exploded. That's it. Yeah, we look at it like as, you know, distorted and weird and sad. But no, the, that person, that person is, you can't even understand the level of, of, of you know what it is, to down Kiddush Hashem. This is, it's called Harugay Malchut. You know, the Tanaim, oh, Rabbi Akiva, with the whole life was praying to down Kiddush Hashem. Who? Doesn't matter. Can the person do it on purpose? No. Uh, to, uh, to save somebody, uh, oh. he knows he's going to die, right? Yeah, that, well, that's Mr. Nefesh, yes. So it is also, yeah. That's, uh, you're not allowed to do that. What do you mean? You, you walk into Aza and look for a terrorist to jump on him? No, no, you can't put yourself in danger. You can't put yourself in a, a situation of danger. It's not suicide, but you're not allowed to put yourself in a situation of danger. But if, you know, exactly how you said, if there's no choice, if there's a situation and you say, okay, I see now a terrorist with a belt on him, and if he comes in here, he explodes and a hundred people die, and you run to him and you hug him or whatever, that, that's fine. But you're not allowed to walk into Gaza and start walking and looking for action. You're not allowed to put yourself in this situation. Yes, mama, you don't have to think about your family, for example, you have five, six kids, how's going to be? It it, that's why it depends on the situation. That's why you're not allowed to put yourself in the situation. No, you don't put, but you see, like you told, you see right now he's gonna. Then the thing is that you have to. The thing is, I can already tell you, from being in the army, how your mind works. When you get to the situation, you don't think. You don't really think with reason. You you react. That's why you see in the army that the soldiers they don't like sit. Oh wait a minute, maybe my mom will be sad now. This, you just. You just do what you need to do. And every person that comes to Mesirut Nefesh, you see even people like in the, you know, in the, in the Holocaust. How many people died because they weren't even religious, but they came to, told, to tell them to do something, and they're like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And they got killed just because of that. So sometimes when you get to the point, you know, of the, to, to take action, you don't really think. You just react.